this video is going to take you through the RPL process. Now if you're considering the RPL process but haven't made a decision yet, we do have another video that you might want to watch before you proceed to watch this. We'll put the link for it down below. Now RPL is for currently skilled workers, so it means that you've been working in that job for a little while. The reason we do RPL is so that it saves you going through a full assessment process. Now if you are going through the RPL process, you would have been sent an evidence guide. Now this evidence guide basically takes you through the key knowledge and areas of that unit. When you look at it, they can be a little bit scary. They're written in fairly serious education talk um, and as you look through each section it, it may come across like um, out of your league. If you really want to determine whether or not this process is for you for that particular unit, start at the key questions. So those key questions are the basic questions for the unit and what we need you to do is answer those questions in as much detail as possible. Now when you do answer the questions, do it from your own experiences. They don't necessarily need to be generalised or definition based answers, it's more about what you do to prove your understanding. So for example, if the question was, um, how do you prepare for a presentation, talk about what you do specifically to prepare for a presentation. Do you write notes? Um, do you type it up? Whatever it is, it needs to be your individual response. Now as you are going through, and you do talk about documentation that you use, it's a really good idea to put that aside so that you can submit that as part of your portfolio. So going back to that example, if your question was how do you prepare for a presentation and you've said that you take notes, you can provide an example of those notes in with your portfolio. That way not only are you proving understanding, but you have evidence that proves that you've done it before. Now the hard part about these key questions is that unlike a normal assessment, there are no set answers. So as an assessor, I don't have a guide that tells me the answer is X. Because what you do to prepare for a presentation and what I do to prepare for a presentation might be completely different. So instead, we have a list of key things that we need to tick off. So if you do answer your question and you feel like you've put in heaps of detail, but then your assessor might come back to you and say, look, I need to know a little bit more about this. Don't be offended and don't feel like you've failed. It's really just because we have key things we need to cover and you just may have missed it in the way you were going about answering. It does happen fairly regularly. Now the next thing you need to do after you answer your key questions is have a look at documentation that supports your answers. So the first step is those answers that you've already provided. So in, um, in the example that we were talking about, your notes for that presentation but you may also want to provide other examples with it. So if you have PowerPoints that then went with that, you might want to provide that too. Anything that proves your experience and knowledge. When we do um, assess RPL, it's about proving one, that you have the knowledge, two, that you have the skill, and three, that you do it regularly. It makes it a lot easier for us to assess it if you do do all of those things. Now, when you're providing your answers to your key questions and you're providing the documentation that supports, it's that front page of your evidence guide that we use to make sure you cover off on all areas. So on that front page you have an essential evidence guide. These are the minimum requirements for that unit. So it might sound a little bit confusing and there are a few steps here, but the biggest, um, the biggest focus for you are those key questions and to answer them in detail. After your essential evidence are key knowledge and key skills. Now if your answers to your questions are detailed enough and you're providing a portfolio to back them up, it's likely that you've covered those key skills and knowledge without even trying. So if we stick with the example that we're doing, if your question is to uh, provide evidence of preparing for a presentation and part of the key skills is to prove that um, your, you demonstrate um, ethics and non-discrimination all that sort of stuff, and the presentation that you provide um, is one that doesn't discriminate, is appropriate, all of those sorts of stuff, then you have ticked off both of those things at the same time. So don't be too scared by your evidence guide. Now, after all of that, the other thing that you need to remember is that your trainer is here to help you. So once you've provided your first portfolio, 
give your trainer a bit of a chance to have a, a look at it, assess it. They might have some questions for you to clarify documentation or whatever. Um, but that final assessment process then is something that they do with you. Um, and that's about it. So when you are looking at RPL and you are looking at those evidence guides, don't be afraid. Really just bring it straight back down to those key questions and um, best of luck.